there can be see when it when it comes to love devotion it really is intuitive so you can follow your heart but i've noticed that when people first come to bhakti and love a few little pointers or tricks can be helpful to unlock that intuition and i'll just share with you what i know and there may be more things you can do than what i'm sharing with you but one thing a few things that helped me one was gratitude for me in my journey i didn't i found it very difficult to like or love the idea of a god and it didn't sit totally well with me so i prefer the idea of the universe and i could say okay i i i was able to say i give thanks to the universe but i realized quickly that this gratitude this thankfulness is and it may not be obvious but is the same as love and devotion because love thankfulness or gratitude and happiness are actually one and the same that but there are different aspects of this same positive feeling so that's one way prayer another def definitely you can pray to god and we can, god is however we want god to be so god can be personal god can be impersonal god can be both it can be beyond both but when it comes to bhakti i encourage you to think of god as personal because god in essence is you and as we consider ourselves if we consider ourselves in ignorance to be the body mind we are considering ourselves to be a person and if we consider ourselves to be a body mind therefore consider ourselves to be a person we can talk to god as if he or she or it is a person and because we are constructing all of this because we are creating all of this not as body mind but as self however we reach out to god god will respond accordingly so the easiest thing to do is just to talk to god ask god god i i am really enjoying this bhakti this devotion this bhakti feeling how can i deepen it how can i strengthen it what do i do and then let him answer let her answer let your god respond and however you conceive of your god however you reach out to your god your god will speak back to you god will come to your level and respond to you on your level of course that's what god does so the simplest way is to ask to have a have a chat have a chat with god and i like to use that informal language because it can be just informal have a chat to a friend have a chat to god have a talk with god other things that can help um <laughs> idol worship there we go imagery pictures is there an image of god you particularly like um 
I've, I've got a um, picture of Jesus by my bedside. Um, don't worry, there's a picture of Ramana by my bedside too. <laughs> got a picture of Jesus by my bedside and it's a picture, it's a, it's a Catholic type picture. It's an image of Jesus, the risen Christ. So he's got the stigmata, but the, um, the wounds from where the nails were put into him when he was um, put up on the cross. And it's, a, it's also an image of the sacred heart of Jesus. So it's got an image of it, uh, a heart throbbing and waves emanating from him. And I love that I've always loved this image of Jesus. Um, not always, since I saw it. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't only came across this image of Jesus as an adult. Um, and, but, but in this image of Jesus, he's got totally white skin, you know, very fair complexion. And his face is quite effeminate. And he, he looks like, you know, he, he looks very European. And um, my my eldest son um, saw this saw this picture yesterday, and he's seen it before many times. And we were talking about it. He was saying, "Gosh, Jesus, he looks like is that is that a man or is that a woman? He looks like a woman, Daddy. You know, Jesus looks like a woman there. And and he's got these holes in his. Um, he's got he. I, I can see he's come off the cross. I said, I said, yes. As we were talking about it. But you see, this image of Jesus is probably totally inaccurate. You know, he didn't, he probably didn't look like that. He, he was an Arab Jew, as, as far as we know. He probably had a far darker complexion. So what do I do now? I have a resonance with this image of Jesus that probably is historically completely inaccurate. You see? The, the, the problem is, I don't care. It means nothing to me. I, I like that image of Jesus. I know it's probably historically inaccurate. I don't care. I'm drawn to that image. So I worship Jesus when I feel like it, using that image. And probably Jesus doesn't care. He's happy. Somebody is coming to him. Doesn't, doesn't care if you come to him as Jesus, as Bhagwan Ramana, as Krishna. You can worship God however you want to, as long as it is truthful for you. And God is happy. He's just happy you are coming to him. And again, apologies for using the masculine. That again, that's just the way I like to refer to the divine as the masculine. You can refer to the divine however you want to. It doesn't matter. So images, idol, find your way. What do you like to do? Traditionally, in India, in the in, in India, they they in in the Hindu style of worship, they will use all the senses. So you've got a visual sense. There will be something you can hear, maybe chanting or maybe just ringing a bell. There will be the smell, the incense, agarbati. Agarbati is in in Bengali is the is what we call incense. You can light some agarbati. And, and some incense. There'll be um, some sandalwood. You smell it, the sandalwood paste. Then they, you'll use, you know, you do some things. You maybe put some red dye onto the picture. You touch. You mark. You will do some prostration. You're involving the whole of your sensory experience. So, I personally don't do that. Personally, I don't like to do all that stuff. That's too much for me. 
I don't need to light the incense. I don't feel like lighting the incense. I don't feel like ringing the bell before I pray. Anything. For me, I, I like to keep it very simple. Even the image, even the external image, often I'll look at it and then I'll close my eyes and then I like to have the image within me. I don't even like the external image too much. As your mind becomes more and more subtle, you will not speak, you will not be drawn towards the outward things so much. But you find your way. How do I worship you, God? Ask God. How do I in increase my devotion to you? And I want to give you a, just finish off the response to Graham's question with two more things for everyone listening. When you are filled with love, you are happy. Okay? Remember that. When you are happy and filled with love, you are not desiring other things. Why? Because when you are happy and content, by definition, you're not desiring more. Because you are happy and content with what you have. When you are happy and content and not desiring, what happens to your thoughts? Do they increase or decrease? They decrease. What happens to your anxiety if you're anxious, when you're filled with love and happiness? It decreases. It combats the fight or flight, adrenaline mediated response in the body. So even if you, just on a purely physiological level, on a purely practical level, bhakti is a wonderful antidote to stress and overthinking and ultimately ignorance, which is all the thinking that emanates from the I'm the body mind idea. So you haven't if you're not if you haven't already caught the bhakti bug i recommend you investigate on a purely practical level even it's very beneficial for our mental health for our physical and mental health for our stress levels for our mind to become clear and intelligent and wise gets rid of all those extra neurotic thoughts I often call um, love, devotion, a bulldozer. Whereas meditation is like a pair of tweezers. Bhakti is like a bulldozer. The bhakti bulldozer. There we go. What, I'm, what do I mean? If you have lots of thoughts, lots of anxieties, lots of worries, the bhakti bulldozer will push all of these away. It will scrape away all your worries, all, your, all these big worries, big pains you have, big problems. It can help sweep them all away. And what happens if you use a bulldozer? You can sweep away all the big structures on a building site with a bulldozer. What's left over, there'll still be some rubble, some dirt around. You can then use your finer instruments. Maybe you can pick things up. And eventually, you can use some tweezers just to remove the fine bits of dust, fine particles of dirt. If you have just fine particles of dirt, you don't need the bhakti bulldozer. And if you've got lots and lots of big pieces of rubbish, you don't want to use tweezers to get rid of those. It doesn't work. Because we are innately wise, it may not always feel that way, but it's true. You are all, each of you, innately wise. You have inherent wisdom in you. You'll be drawn to the tool that is most suitable for removing your own vasanas. Whether that's hatha yoga, mantra, repetition, breath, bhakti, jnana, the path of jnana yoga. But remember, when you are full of happiness and love for God, when this divine love or love for the divine comes welling up inside you, 
the thoughts are going to come down, the peace is going to come in, anxiety is going to go down. Generally speaking, as a rule, if you try and chase it, if you try and chase it, then that's not that's not exactly love for God. That's using God to get what you want. But when you're genuinely feeling love for God, for no other reason that you want to be with him, because you want to be with Ramana, you want to join with him in your heart, you will find everything else falls into place. In fact, bhakti is the essence, the source of all the teachings, all the, all the teachings, all the spiritual path, bhakti. It all comes from bhakti. If you just have bhakti, you'll be fine because you sometimes need more than bhakti. You need the jnana, you need the self-inquiry. But if you just have bhakti, it will take you to wherever you need to go at the time you need it. If you have, if you have love for God, when you need the self-inquiry teachings, magically the self-inquiry teachings will be there. <laughs> If you have a love for God, when you need a mantra, the mantra will suddenly come to you. When you need, if you have bhakti, when you need a guru, the guru will come. And if you have bhakti, when you no longer need the external guru, you will say bye-bye to the external guru. You see? So with bhakti, it will take you, it will give you whatever you need. And if all you need is bhakti, then, then you're there anyway. 